What's up everybody, it's Parker with BI Elite. I have a fun video today showing you how to set up dynamic axes and legends within your visuals. You can do this with personalized visuals that came out a few months back, uh, but I still like the idea of being able to bake in the different options for your end user when it comes to these dynamic functionalities. For example, if I were to change the slicer selection from color to state, we can see that my X axis is now showing these bars based on the states or customer category, for example. And we can also do this not only for the x-axis, but we can do this for the legend as well. So if I were to open this up and throw in my category into the legend, and let's throw in a date. Uh, let's just do date in the axis and get rid of a couple of these selections uh, and just kind of give you a quick rundown of this. So we see that the legend is now based on our selected customer category. But if I were to select color now, we see that our legend is changing to show us the top five colors. So this is extremely dynamic and fun for the end user, and I'm gonna show you how you can set this up. It's actually not too hard to do. Firstly, I'm gonna show you the data model, and this is a fairly sizable data model, so this isn't just you know a small example. I'm actually showing you how I might use this in a real working data model. So the table that we care most about is this legend categories, this one that's highlighted here. And we can see that it is connected to a few different dimensions. So firstly, we have a couple of fact tables here, the sales orders and sales order lines table, but we have several dimensions as well. For example, order lines is connected to stock items. So the actual item information that makes up those orders and each stock item has a color. Similarly, each order has a customer and each customer has a customer category, and each customer also has geographical information such as cities, states, and countries. So we can see that this legend categories table that we care about is connected to warehouse colors, categories, and states. So these are the three dimensions that we want to let the user dynamically switch between. One thing to note is that we have inactive relationships between our table in question and the three dimension tables. This is going to make it to where those relationships don't actually do anything until we call on them. So right now, let me go ahead and show you what this legend categories table actually looks like or, or how we're going to create it. So in the data view, I see my legend categories table. This is the entire code. And basically what I'm doing here is, let's start with the select columns here. Uh, I am selecting one of my dimension tables, the categories table. I'm defining a new column called category and providing all of the options in that category table, that category name column. And then I'm also defining a hard coded column called field called customer category. So let me go ahead and filter down just for cat uh, customer category so that it makes the most sense here. Uh, basically, I have all eight of my customer categories and a field indicating that this is customer category. And then we're going to do the exact same thing for any other dimension that I want. I'm using three different dimensions just to make this a nice example, but you can do this for five dimensions, 10 dimensions, as many as you want. So I'm doing the same thing where I'm selecting from my second dimension table and I'm grabbing all of the distinct colors this time and calling this field color but I'm also unioning these two together. So basically I'm just adding on to my customer category table, adding those colors, and then finally I'm adding each individual state. So if I get rid of my filters, we can see that I have all my customer categories labeled as customer categories, all my colors labeled as colors, and finally I have all of my states with the field value of state. So you can start to get an idea of what this table looks like, how it's shaped. Basically, we're just gonna have a long list of all of the dimensions that we could want to use. And once we have this table looking this way, we come back to our modeling view and we set up these inactive relationships. And basically, we're gonna set them up on the columns that really make the most sense. Uh, for example, if we actually look quickly at our table here, if we're trying to connect to the colors table, recall that we're using the color name uh, column within the colors table. So we just want to set up this relationship to the colors table based on the color name column to the category, which the category also contains those color names. And make sure to set this up uh, with a mini to one cardinality from your original dimension table to your new table used specifically for the dynamic switching. And I also want to set that to a single cross filter direction and really important, make sure that you uncheck the make this relationship active. We want this to be an inactive relationship so it doesn't do anything until we want to visualize it in our measures. 
So I have one relationship set up to that first colors dimension, another one set up to the categories dimension, then one more set up to the states dimension. So with that, I can actually come back and I'm gonna add a new tab and kind of take this from scratch at this point. So if I were to open up or uh, create a new slicer from my legend categories uh, field value. So keep in mind that the field are my options uh, for color, customer category, or state. So that's going to allow the user to select one of those three. And then let's uh, come over here and create a bar chart. And let's throw in our category in the axis. And I already have a total sales measure. Let me just grab that total sales measure. So this isn't actually gonna work yet. We see that all of my total sales are going to show the same value for each individual category. And that makes sense because there isn't an active relationship from any of those fact tables to our new legend categories table. Instead, we actually need to write some DAX in order to call on those relationships when we click on the specific field here. And I've already done that as well. Let me go ahead and pull up that measure. So here's the entire measure. Uh, so I'm calling it sales variable category, meaning they can select which category they wanna show. It's just a single switch statement, and I'm gonna set it equal to true. So this first condition, uh, we're gonna check for if they've clicked on the customer category. So we can say if selected value of that legend categories field, recall that is what is making up the slicer. Uh, if that's set equal to customer category, we wanna calculate our total sales, uh, which is just a generic sales measure. Uh, but specifically, we want to use the relationship between our legend categories category and the uh, categories table customer category name. So if we come back to our modeling view, let me go ahead and click on that. Basically, it's saying to use this relationship right here, make this an active relationship for the purpose of evaluating our measure. So that is going to activate and actually going to filter down based on our customer category name. So back to our uh, report view. Uh, we do the exact same thing for color. So if they've selected color, we just want to use the relationship between our legend categories category and warehouse colors color name. And then the only difference in the last one is if they select state, we want to use the relationship between the legend categories category and the state state province name. So basically we're just calling on each individual relationship depending on what they've selected in the slicer selection. And the result of that is largely similar to what I showed you in the beginning. Let me go ahead and take my values. Instead of total sales, we use sales variable category. And in order to make this a little bit more viewable, I'm going to filter this down uh, to only show the top five categories based on that measure. Uh, so let's go ahead and do a quick top in based on my sales variable category. And let's just show five. And there we go. So we probably want to make this single select just so it makes the most sense. So single select, and we can out, uh, and we can also get rid of blank. So let's go ahead and filter out blank. And there we go, there's our final solution. So as they've selected color, we show that uh, we have five bars here that are all showing colors or customer categories or states. And just recall, you can do this in the legend as well if you wanted to. So uh, it's subdivided by state or color or customer category. So that's the entire video. This is extremely easy to do. Uh, it also allows you to add more dimensions or take away dimensions if you want to, just to allow your user to dynamically switch between uh, those different categories. So if you like this video, make sure you check out my training over at training.bielite.com. We have some great courses on Power BI DAX and Alteryx. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.